Okay, here we are. We are about to start uh, our match of the uh, last eight round, and uh, here in the commentary booth uh, again with us is uh, Corey Duell, uh, who, uh, according to uh, Facebook uh, comments, uh, was uh, very welcomed by the audience. Yes, your 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 uh, very special insights to the game uh, were of very high importance. Yeah. So, Everybody. hello. There's three of us. Corey has just uh, said, 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 said said thank you. Uh, just he was muted, so he would oh. pro like probably would like to uh, repeat this. Oh, that thank break you. is just awesome. Check it out. Thank you. Yeah, Maxim. Maximus. Yeah, I think Maxim yeah. has a good shot. I mean, because he, the way he played with Nika, he has good chances. Yeah, it, well, this 10 ball, it just comes down to the break. If he breaks and all the balls are laying in front of the pocket, he'll be the favorite to win. He right? made four balls, the two didn't go over the, over the pocket. Yeah. This wreck is over, this wreck is over with. <laughs> it's not quite over, but... It is now. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's over. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, when people gamble, I mean, if he makes a couple more balls, they usually throw this in. Then <laughs> the wreck has just started. <laughs> Yeah. The core got an interesting idea that people should maybe switch to 9-ball or to 8-ball because this is really routine, you know? Rack after rack after rack. If well... The, if the person get, has the break, you know? I have my favorite games that I play. You know, I enjoy playing uh, one pocket, 8-ball, snooker. I really enjoy the pyramid game. I enjoy the games that have a lot of play in them. Safeties and uh, back and forth. Uh, yeah, there's nothing much to it. Just, I mean... Of course, Maxim is a top player, but like 80% of the field can do that now. I mean, routine mm. runouts, one well, after another. So. Th the skill in 10 ball, the main skill, the most important one, is the break shot. If you can get the break shot and make a few balls on the break and, and all the balls are just laying there, then... Uh, you know the rack gets easier as it goes along so when you get down to the end you only have two balls and and there's no traffic so there's no worries a game like eight ball it gets harder as the game goes along so in the beginning of the game you have lots of options you could choose uh, you know six different shots but when it guns down to the end you only have a couple choices left and you still have some traffic on the table so uh, but Maxim did a great break shot, and if he can continue to break like that, I think he'll be the favorite to win. So oh, he's got some support uh, on the stands uh, from uh, his group, uh, the Billard Brothers. Uh, by the way, uh, what's your impression uh, of your encounter uh, with uh, one of them uh, in the face of Fedor Gorst? Uh, actually, uh, I'm a little bit impressed with the scoreline. Oh yeah, the young the young yeah. guy. Yes, he he played he played nice on me. Like like I say, he had the break shot down. And um, if you lose a couple, if you well lose a couple of shots, it's going to be over pretty soon, you know. I mean, it's hard to yeah, get into the match. The races are are quite Sh short. Really short. I yeah, thought it's going yeah. to be race to nine, but race to it is a very short race, and probably in the final they're going to make it race to nine like last year. But yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of pressure. You make one mistake. You feel yeah. you're not going to win the match, you know? Uh, honestly, I didn't feel much pressure this morning. I think I just woke up maybe on the wrong side of the bed, and uh, I missed a few shots early. He missed the 10 ball first game and left me a long shot of the 10, and I didn't I didn't hit it well. And then the next game I missed a pretty easy 8 ball. But he was breaking solid, you know. See, look at that. Ralph just hit the break. Got the ball in, and uh, no, one, no good shot here. Yeah. Yeah, so he didn't he didn't get he didn't hit the lottery as I say. Yeah. I say if you break and get straight in you hit the lottery, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that 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 can make the difference. But see now a player like Ralph, you can see his skill come out because he knows what now to do. he's gonna play a safety or he's gonna push out or this is where the real skill in the game is gonna come out. In the fighting how to win how to win the open table, right? It, well, the, the clo when the table's tough you have to the skills come out you have to right? negotiate for a shot the players are going to are going to play some safeties and and see who can get the first open shot and i think that's the beauty in a game like 10 ball or 9 ball really so we'll see what ralph does here 
it looks Corey, like he can uh, maybe okay. bank this cross corner. Yeah, Corey, do you agree that for the last 15 years the game changed drastically because of the new cloth, brand new tables, magic rack? I mean, completely different story now. Oh, look at that. He he, he mishit that, double kissed the cue ball, and it ended up perfect. He got right on the five, yeah. I think the magic rack was, uh, you know, well, they started with the Sardo tight rack, where they just tapped all the balls in. They used to have that. And w when you freeze all the balls, uh, it, you get the same reaction every time, so the break gets to be pretty easy. No, uh, I'm saying, in general, now there are... Now the less quality players can beat world beaters because of the. I mean, it's well, mainly, also a factor. Yeah. Well, the thing the thing is is when you when you raise the number of runouts. So when when you play with a magic, there's going to be less skill involved, less such situations. Well, the uh, if both players are running out, lucky let's say it, lucky. You saw that. Let's say that both players are running out 80 percent of the time, whereas they used to run out. 40% of the time. Now you're playing alternate the break, so take 50% of your racks that you play are runouts. So really now you're only playing a race to uh, four. Yeah. Because 50% of them are runouts. That's so you just you just trade the runouts off yeah. because both players alternate. So you might as well just cancel those games out because there's no play in them, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, you see yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Now if you both players ran out 20% of the time. That is ridiculous. Do you agree? Well, no. It, well, the, what the thing is, is when I first started playing, we played races to 15, long races, and there wasn't near as many runouts. So we had maybe uh, seven or eight games apiece that there was play in the games where it was safety battles back and forth. Now we have shorter races and the players run out more. Yeah. So we're really only playing a race to four on the games we actually have play in. Does that make sense? Wow, he made so I I don't know if he called the uh, one. No, he did it. not. That's okay. a change of turn. So let's wave at the camera here. Everybody's <laughs> watching us. Yeah, so <laughs> it's good to be here in Russia, <laughs> except it's for the cold. I don't like the cold. The weather is it's, it's not just cold, but, but the weather is just just horrifying because it's raining and it's. I couldn't get out, out of my house for 40 minutes today because I. Uh, the fence was stuck I couldn't open it <laughs> <laughs> well just uh, every year uh, it's a different story you could uh, have snow you could have rain you could have uh, sunshine whatever that's well, why uh, this time I'm going back to Cor to Palm Springs Florida oh yeah yeah we'll I'll send together. you pictures I'll send you pictures <laughs> no, no, of no, some no, palm no, trees I'm going there. <laughs> well you know and there is the option of having the tournament in the summertime Probably yeah. not. <laughs> no, no, summertime is a pool player's vacation, always. Oh, okay. <laughs> they don't play pool in the summertime. Yeah, pool's mainly a, a bad weather sport. So. Uh. Yeah, but I think you're right, Yuri. If, if the break is easier, the races should be longer. Right, or the, if people are running this out more. Uh, this tournament is four days long. You want to make a tournament that's seven days long? It's w with the logistics. It's not going to happen. That's yeah, the it doesn't make any sense because they had 400 players in the pyramid. Yeah, and they played pretty long matches. But actually, so actually, matches. this is going to be fair because, like, uh, remember the IPT? It was a pretty long uh, distance. Long but there was and it, it was round robin uh, all the way. The way no it, it was. It, it was very. It was very good. Talking about such a tournament like this, so. It could be running uh, like uh, for uh, seven days. It's okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, sure. Tell that to the tournament directors, <laughs> to the owners of this uh, place. I'm well, done with uh, that. I would play for two weeks. No problem. This is a different story. Yeah. Of course. But the same yeah. people are gonna win all the time. Yeah. Well, they they are still always <laughs> winning. But I mean, it's gonna eliminate all the possibilities, like for this young kid. Yeah. By the way, nice shot by Ralph, right? It's a very tough. This is a tough shot. This is yeah, a very this tough is shot. A and gonna uh, test your queuing here. Yeah, but I don't know. Elevation. Elevation, and you have to have position also for the next ball. Yeah, he missed it, and uh, what's gonna happen here? I think he got pretty open fortunate. shot. Open yeah, shot on the two. He got fortunate. Yeah. He didn't leave it. Not yet, Too yeah. easy. Yeah. I think Ralph's gonna have to play safe here. Yeah. But again, Ralph is, has been around forever. He knows what to, exactly to do here, right? I'm glad he knows what to do, because I'm not sure what I would do. Maybe thin the two, 
and bring the cue ball the down by the corner pocket near the green six ball. That's somewhat of a safety. Well, he's well, nine left the, 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 this nine is the handed. Nine and the seven can be a good rub of blockers here. Yeah, that's what Corey, I think. Are you good opposite handed? I am not that good opposite handed, no. So you wouldn't gamble with someone playing opposite handed? No. No? Okay. No. It depends on the stake. <laughs> depends how depends on what kind of spot I get. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well this is a tough kick. I think he needs to just hit it maybe the middle diamond on the butt that's where he's looking right there, the middle diamond. And I would hit this with high left hand spin. That way, after hits a two, the cue ball tries to come back By towards the, way, he the back shot. I mean, well, I mean, I suggested that that was the correct shot, and he ex executed it perfect. So I think he's gonna get the best of it. Watch. Yeah. Well, no, still it's tough, but I figure he's gonna he's gonna find the way to attack here. I don't know. Yeah, I think he'll try and shoot the two in the corner, right hand corner pocket. And, and play for position. the side for the four. The side? Okay. You know. Ralph is, uh, I mean, he understands that the game favors more aggressive players, so, I mean, even though he plays conservative, but, I mean, I think he, I think you have to take it on, right? Here. Yeah, you, I think you have to shoot at this yeah. one. And Ralph's a pretty straight shooter, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got a nice, smooth stroke. Yeah, I would sure. expect him to make this. Yeah. Oh, what a shot. Good shot. That that was way tougher than it looked. So, now, basically, what he has to do if you fall on the five, that's game, right? Yeah, but you have to, the thing is, you have to get pretty straight on the five, because you have to hold for the six. If he ends up with too much angle on the five, he's going to have to bring the cue ball around can, the table. Uh, he can kind of draw it to the long rail? Well, he's got a little angle going towards the seven, so I think he's going to try and draw back. But I'm not sure if he can get straight well, enough. If it was Ruslan Chinakov, uh, it was a sure bet he would uh, be able to make this such a such, such kind of a shot, like smooth he draw. He can shoot the cor four angle. in the corner too. So yeah, yeah like that's this. it. Like that's this. it. Yeah. But see, this isn't that easy because now he's got too much angle on the five. The ball. He's got to hit this. Uh, I think he's right going to go up and back. Ball. Oh, really? Yeah, I think he's going to try and go up and back on this. I don't know. He's got to hit it really soft to stay for the six. No, he's going to kill it. He's going to baby it. Like he does always. Oh, he always babies, babies it. That's great. He's the best player in the world by far by with rolling the ball. Oh, he's okay. He's the best player by far. Yeah. He always does it. And he's very precise. Yeah. Good shot there. Yeah, I mean, that just... Great stuff. All right, straight in the side. Yo, yeah, Ralph looks ready yeah, for it. <laughs> I think Ralph is getting his gear. Nice, we have a little background music here for the tournament. Yes, and it's going to be even, uh, I think, louder during the day. So do we have tickets? Or can we get tickets to the concert if we want to go and listen? Mm, I think so. Yeah, okay. Because, again, the, the organizer of the event uh, is the same guy. Same, okay. I guess. Perfect. Well, this will be tied up. And then we get to see Maxim's break again. So far, Ruslin, Ruslan Chinakov is uh, battling Alexander Kazakis, and uh, it's 3 to 3 over there. For the spot in the semifinals. 
And there is a very interesting uh, pair of opponents there uh, in the face of Dmitry Chuprov and uh, the player from Lebanon. His last name is uh, Elzain and. Uh, We've been talking uh, during our last match that uh, uh, there are pretty uh, um, decent players nowadays uh, from the Middle East. Oh. And uh, you play in, uh, in Kuwait, I think you can yeah, support that. Yeah, there are some yeah. good players over there now. Uh, they've improved a lot uh, ever since the internet, you know, where, where all these countries, they can, they can watch the... And the free videos most on the internet. Most important, mo the majority of them uh, have uh, Filipino coaches coaching yeah. the national teams. Oh, yeah, the Filipinos stay there and coach oh. them, yeah. Yeah, they have a lot of tools to be able to get better. But, uh, you know, the people watching this uh, stream right here are learning right now as we speak. So. Well, Maxim really is breaking nice. Look at that. Ooh, but I don't think he hit the lottery this time. Well, he must have been uh, working uh, a lot on this uh, part of the game lately because uh, actually uh, he one of his uh, weakest parts uh, recently was a uh, cue ball control on the break. He always uh, was losing it and like scratching like crazy. Well, that time well, that's he That's the break of Dudunet? Yeah. Again, I mean, his break is awesome, right? Yeah, and but he has no shot. Yeah, but So he's guaranteed to lose this game. You think so? Well, he's got to push out and the and the ones hanging over the hole, it's uh, uh, He's gonna have to there? push what out to a kick. I'd push to a kick shot and try and kick the one in, okay. or jump the one in. Okay. But uh, it's difficult. Or you could actually push out and make the one. He could roll. Uh, the two. Yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't do much because then the two'd be over the hole. So. I think I'd push out to a kick. I'd probably push the cue ball up near the side pocket. And then I'd try and kick the one in slow, and then make the two. Okay. That's probably what I would try and do. And it's always good to tie a ball up, too. Like, maybe tie the ten up on the five. Or the ten on the nine. If you can, if you can tie something up for later in the game... And then you don't you don't win the battle to get the one. Then maybe there's another battle. But later. if you if you tie something up, uh, you should uh, have a decision uh, like uh, to solve it later. I don't understand. If you if you share. if you stay at the, at the table. I think you can make the one. Yeah, that's what he tried to do: is tie the eight up on the one, which was a smart decision. But, but he I didn't think get there. yeah, I think he left uh, he left the one, but it's not easy position to get on the two. It might be dangerous to actually play position on the two because if you don't get there, you hook yourself. Whereas if he, if Ralph can just roll the one in and then play a nice safety behind the eight, maybe he can guarantee win the game. So we'll see what he tries to do if he if he decides to just roll the one in and play safe on the two, or or maybe he'll try and go between the two seven and and, and get in. He'd be floating into a maybe three inch area there. If he can get the cue ball near the seven, he can cut the uh, two in. Still, the proximity of the eight ball uh, makes uh, this kind of shot a little bit uh, dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous to try and play position. Okay, I think it looked like he was just trying to play position for a safety. I'm not sure if he's going to try and bank this cross corner. He could maybe bank it past the nine. Yeah, yeah just safety. That was a smart play. So two rail escape is there? Yeah, there's a two rail escape, but uh, I don't know if you can uh, get many good results off that. You think you could go two rails, maybe the two can go in the corner pocket. I think he's looking to just kick at it one rail and try and make the two pass the nine in the corner. Oh, the cubal is pretty close to the side rail here. 
needs to avoid a double hit then. Yeah, yeah, you have to make a nice short stroke because if you follow through too far, you could hit the cue ball twice. Well, that was a good try. Yeah, this is this could could have been dirty. <laughs> mm. Can he make the two? Yeah, I think he can. He can make the two. I'm not but sure. What do you do with the seven? Do you break it out right now? I think I'd yeah, I'd send the cue ball into the eight. Okay. Because then the, after you hit the eight, the cue ball is going to follow forward a little bit. You okay. should have a shot at this. Should so have a yeah, shot. That, that's where the experience comes out, right? Well, and, and another thing he could do, he could play safe. He could also draw the cue ball behind the seven, eight, and bank the two ball around the table if he wanted. If he didn't, if he didn't like the shot, I like shooting the two in and run the cue ball into the eight ball. But let's see what Ralph does. Looks like he's playing the safety. Oh my god. I mean, probably he knows better, but yeah, Ralph is in this mode of the tournament where he wants the. how to say? For him, the outcome is very important. <laughs> how much money he's gonna make, so he's thinking how to make the right shot. Well, he's here, right? Uh, uh, but he tied up the seven worse, even, even worse, so I, I don't know what's he gonna. Yeah, what's so. his plan? So. Yeah, he had he actually had an opportunity there to make the two and break it out. Yeah. And now, but when he played safe, he, that uh, that opportunity is now gone because yeah. two balls down here, and he but can't really. He would have ball in hand. Maybe he can break it out from the five. What? No, the oh, five is can, kind of tough. I think the and way Max to made a great shot. I think the way to win this game for Ralph is if he were to get ball in hand on the two there. He would make the two, he would run, make the five, and then he would come down and then he would play again another safety and and leave the cue ball froze behind the eight. And that was probably his plan, was two safeties. He was thinking two safeties ahead okay. to win, to ensure the win on the game. But Maximum... Now, he now I don't know what's, what's he's going to do. The safeties aren't, aren't uh, a guaranteed... Most people kick and hit the ball now, you know, so... Let's not forget that Ralph is here after a hard four to win against uh, Dennis Grubb. Uh, yeah. He won only on a hill hill, so probably he just uh, wants to Related to keep. To he should, he just w wants to uh, keep uh, things like uh, slow here. I think. Well, whatever happened in your last match shouldn't matter for this match, but yeah, I, uh, Ralph is just a, kind of a slow player anyway. That's just the way he plays. He plays a lot of safeties and. Doesn't take too many chances. He's very calculated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I w would object uh, calling him slow. He just uh, plays his own tempo. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not, it's not no, as slow as snails, you know. I'm not saying slow. <laughs> I mean conservative. Yeah. Kind of conservative. He's not a I very really aggressive player. I didn't understand that shot, but still, the seven eight is very bad. I think from here, it's just. You try and get get on the two uh, from the two to the five. You could come straight across and get straight in. But um, the key is to get on the seven, where you can play a nice safety behind the eight. You know, you'd really want the cue ball where the two is on the seven, so you can play just roll up on the eight. I think he's going to play the safe now. Bank the two, three rails around. No. Tried to get on the five. I think that was dangerous. <clears throat> yeah, this game starting to remind me of a record-breaking game, uh, World Ten Ball Championship 2008. Ralph was playing the Hungarian champion Wilma Schwoldas. And they had a wreck of ten ball. They played it for 40 minutes. Wow! It was the same kind of cluster. Huh. They kept playing safe and safe and safe after safe. Well, looks like Ralph's trying to bank this ball. Draw the cue ball. Very good cue ball control from Ralph. There, he got the cue ball right behind the seven. 
He did leave a shot on the five. But what if, if he had he made it? Uh, had he made it? What was what was his plan? See, for me, this like is an thin, enjoyable game to thin watch. Cut here. Oh, really? With all the tactics back and forth, I like okay. this. But um, is this going to improve the situation? The presence of the ten ball there or not really? Well, it improves the I chances of the safety. How do you like to play that cross corner and to and the cue ball will go in the direction of the seven eight? Or I think what you could do here is you could you could just play play safe on the five, bank the five over to the middle diamond on the bottom rail, and play the cue ball into the ten. Oh, well, if you make the ten, you don't. You don't win the game anyway, so that would just spot up. Nice rule, huh? I mean, about the ten, ten ball coming. Yeah, so that's out the window. You can't yeah. do that. That was one of my ideas. I like the safety here, then. I mean, just play the safety. Just try and bank the five over and bring the cue ball behind the ten. Because there's no value in trying to make the five. I'm still making the call for the cross corner. Yeah, the main thing you don't want to do is do not bump the 8-7. Eight, eight, op don't open them up. Try and go behind the 10. Okay, I think Maxim's got a good shot here. He can just, instead of trying to make the 5, he can spin the cue ball around 3 rails under the 7-8. And then bank the... So behind the 10 once again. Yeah, behind the 10 again. Or he could make the, he can make the 5 and try and get behind the 7. Wow, look at this shot. Wow, he's going for the secondary oh break oh and he... Yeah, that, that, was, nice. that was a really good shot. That's a beauty. That's a beautiful he didn't shot. have much angle to do that. He that slammed that 5 in. Shot, yeah. And that's a, a great th that's a great confidence booster for the Danes yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I didn't but even think that was possible. But what there. are you gonna do here? You're gonna hit the eight, right? That looked like a pyramid shot. Max is a very good pyramid player. Uh, he used to play that. So what's gonna happen here? No, he could he he didn't have to hit the eight now. Mm -hmm. He can uh, just play across and that's game. That was a beautiful shot to break up the cluster. This is kind of could have could have been better, but he should make it. So remember what you said about this wreck? He's not going to win it. <laughs> oh, I didn't think he was going to win it. Yeah, <laughs> he did win it, and you know what? Won it. He won in the game for him was tying that eight ball up because it created so many back and forth. Uh, it, it brought so much more play in the game. Yes. You know, so that was really crucial for him to tie that ball up in the beginning. Smart, smart play. It really was a great breakout shot that made the outcome actually. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was underdog after the break break shot. It's always hard when you hang the hang a ball up and you can't see it. Difficult to win those games. Okay, let's see if Ralph can a break well and make a ball, and B get very fortunate to have a shot. Hit the lottery, right? He's got to hit the lottery to get a shot. I think you should have to call the ball in pocket for your next ball. So the one you have to call the where you're going to make the one here, the shot. So uh, right uh, off the break. Right before you break, you should have to call where which ball you're going to make, and then where the next one's going to go. 
uh, under uh, such rules, no one is going to beat you. I think. <laughs> no, I get Shane. Shane. Shane Van Bonen. Yeah, pro yeah, probably. Uh, he hit the lottery. See, he hit the lottery. Yeah. He's playing the one in a different yeah. pocket. He wanted to play one in the back of that corner. This wreck is if he makes the one, falls on the f from the three to the four. This wreck is pretty much all over. Yeah. Well, the key here is making this first shot on the one. It's not. It's not super easy. I think th it's easier to make it in the corner than it is the side. Some of the, sometimes shooting the ball in the. Well, if you shoot it in the side, you have to roll it real slow, I think, and the ball could roll off. We'll see not on a diamond table. Well. Oh, it went right in. See the diamond. He trusted the diamond table, and it and it performed for him. Went very straight. <coughs> so getting a getting a good angle from the three to the four here. If he can get the cue ball up around the six, shoot the three in the corner. Looks like he's pretty straight on the two. Might draw back for the side. Yeah, that's the way he decided to play it. Uh, what's next? Perfect. Like uh, rolling forward a little bit? I think he's just going to stun over to the left, maybe a foot, and then take the four and go two rails to get on the five. Now he's just, he's fell a little straighter on the four, so he can just follow this up one rail and just, just come s slightly past the ten, and he should be straight in the corner. Oh, uh, I think we have a Jason Shaw here uh, on Facebook oh, saying uh, right, that uh, yeah, Corey comes up with all these weird things. <laughs> 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 Hello, Jason there. Yeah, Jason. Congrats on making uh, to the Moscone Cup. Yeah, congrats <laughs> on Moscone Cup. What do you think of my rule? You have to call your ball and pocket off the break, and then you have to call where you which pocket you're going to make the one in. Do you like that rule, Jason? And, and uh, would you ever be able to win under uh, such conditions? <laughs> and if you don't do that, you have to push out. How about that? Oh, let's say just take a while. <laughs> Here's your reply, Corey. <laughs> Only you could come <laughs> up with that. I think it's good. Uh, that's true, Jason. Yeah. So I'm gonna Absolutely. call that. I'm gonna call that call shot. That's just call shot pool, but you have to call every shot, including the break. What do you think of that? Well, nice position play from Ralph. Okay. Here, so we're going to have a tie again. The match is only in the very beginning. That's a race to eight, just to remind you. <laughs> Jason says Ralph would like that rule. Well, I think uh, every player with uh, enough uh, background uh, would like that. <laughs> well, there's no, no, there would be no luck in the game. All the luck comes from the break. If you get a shot, if you don't get a shot. Well, actually, it's funny, but uh, uh, there is uh, always never-ending, uh, seems like never-ending talk uh, about uh, this uh, part, uh, lucky party uh, about uh, Russian uh, Russian pyramid, actually. They're just uh, trying to find the way to eliminate uh, the sloppy, uh, slop, slop shots. Is there there's yeah, luck? You because know under, under uh, modern rules, uh, slop counts. Oh, yeah. You know what was funny is that I lucked three balls in in my pyramid match. I remember uh, yesterday I you were talking, the, uh, th that was the reason, uh, according to you, that, that was the reason you were not aware of uh, what you were doing, actually. But Yeah. Yeah, I think you get lucky. Players that don't know what they're doing get have a chance to get lucky. Because if you can calculate every shot, there's no luck. That's my opinion, I don't know. Okay, Maxim. Maxim breaks nice. He'll pop the cue ball past the side. 
Okay, by the way, we have uh, a nice uh, suggestion by Nikita Rudenko, I think a young Ukrainian player, for this uh, kind of game you just uh, offered. See. It's a quarry shot. Not a call shot, but quarry shot pool. Oh, quarry shot pool. <laughs> see, look at that, he got unlucky again. He yeah, had a really he nice break. He scratched. But it wasn't his fault. It, the, the ball, it, he kissed him in the corner. That happens a lot to Shane. Shane, Shane Van Boning, he'll break perfect, especially an eight ball. He'll break and pop the cue ball back in the cue ball, dead stop. And then here come all these balls, and they knock the cue ball right in the pocket a lot of times. So, by the way, this is also uh, like uh, the lucky nature of the game. How can you eliminate that? You can eliminate luck uh, by call shots, but uh, you can, uh, can't avoid uh, these kinds of situations. Well, you can avoid those kinds of situations, but it's just very difficult. Because sometimes, like you said, uh, you hit the cue ball perfectly square with a ton of power and control at the same time, but uh, it gets hit uh, to the to any o to any of the pockets. Yeah, those balls go certain directions. You know, some players can. Uh what I am driving at is actually we have uh, two sides of luck uh, to me, like positive luck and negative luck, uh, rolls your way and uh, rolls uh, that uh, your opponent gets. And if we try to just uh, fight with the positive uh, luck, uh, negative still stays there. Yeah. There was a rule we played where if, if the player uh, misses the shot that he's calling, you can make the player shoot again. Yes, it's call shot, call safe, right? Yeah, I I actually like that rule. I like that rule, but the only problem is is that you can't. They they say you can't. Uh, you can't play any two way shots. You know you can't uh, say I'm calling the five in the corner and I'm also going to carry him the ten in. You can't call both of the five. Yeah, actually, the but but to me, uh, ten ball uh, is not a two way game uh, anyway. Well, there's uh, a beauty uh, in playing those two way shots. Efren Reyes yeah. plays them great the two-way shots. In my opinion, I think you should be able to call not only one ball, but you should be able to call two balls. Why shouldn't you be able to call two balls? You're doing what you said you were going to do. Like right here, if I was going to shoot, shoot the seven and carry him the ten in, I can call them both. And if I make one of the two balls, it should be yeah, good. Yeah, but uh, again, uh, in Russian uh, billiards, uh, there is a a set of rules uh, with uh, call shots and uh, again there are some sort of argument uh, what to do if you m call two balls but make only one. Does the call uh, count or not? Do you have to make both? I think if you to make, make either it a legged shot. I think if you make either one, it should be fine. You're still doing what you say you're trying to do. You know. Uh, I mean, you 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 need to leave it be at two because you could always call three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or just call every ball on the table. You, where does it stop, right? But. Well, Ralph Suke cruises here uh, from mistake, um, not s kind of mistake, but still scratch made by Maxim Dudonetsa on his break. So it's a possibility to try to build his lead a little bit. Pool needs to be as simple as possible for the viewers. See, I would agree with that. Uh, somebody's Philip Stojanovic so is a player uh, from Croatia, uh, yeah. probably residing in the U.S. So maybe I'm mistaken, but yeah. Well, uh, some of the some of the viewers to get them involved in in uh, interested in the game, a game like tel ten ball, it pretty much spells itself out for you. You know the player's going to shoot the one, then they're going to shoot the two next, three, and so on. So it takes the it takes the uh, thought of which which ball is the guy going to shoot next. You know, if if you don't know, if you've never played pool before and you don't know what English is, like when I first started playing pool, I didn't know what English was. I was like, oh, you know, they're putting spin on the ball. I didn't even know they did that. I just thought you just shoot the balls. And that's very good because uh, if you approach a pool table uh, with that kind of knowledge, uh, you are um, going to, I think, to, to spoil your first experience trying to use English when you don't have a clue about it. Yeah. But if we think about all the viewers out there, 
the majority of them don't know, might not know what English is. So if we explain the the game here, they, everybody knows we're going to shoot the one, then the two next, three. Whereas a game like 8-Ball, at least the people with that don't know what English is, they can try and figure out which ball you're going to shoot next, and they can enjoy thinking through that and saying, well, I think you sh should shoot this one that's right by the pocket, you know. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Ralph is uh, with a very sweet break shot here. The position is very nice to run out. Once again, taking his time, even on the shots like this, wants to be uh, as precise uh, as uh, he can. And no wonder one of his nicknames uh, from the US is the surgeon. <laughs> Actually, they didn't take uh, his German one, the Kaiser, yeah. which is basically uh, the king of them all. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he used to be. Hopefully he still is. <laughs> Recently, probably he is a little bit uh, of uh, decline, but uh, hopefully only temporarily. Yeah, I think he's playing well. Looks like he's playing nice. He left a little bit of a long shot here on the four, but a nice angle to get on the five next. You know, he's going to probably try and leave the cue ball right where it is after this four ball shot. Hmm. A little bit of wobble. Yeah, there. a little bit thick. A little bit thick there. I've noticed I do that on on newer cloth and the TV table. I'll hit some of them thick because I think you get a little bit more deflection when the conditions are like that. So has an option here, probably go in uh, this side or that. You never want uh, to be second guessing once you're in the stance, so yeah. it's if important to make a decision beforehand. I'm not sure if he's, I think he's got too much angle just to draw straight back. He might go to the other side here. Yeah, see he he tried to draw straight back, but he would have just he needed to hit that a little, little bit thicker and with more draw. So now he's going to have to hit another one of those slow kill shots. I I like shooting this shot with about like center draw. A little bit of draw and you get the ball to spin backwards for a second and it'll take some of the speed off. No, for real, for real, I think uh, you like uh, shooting this kind of shot uh, jacked up uh, with a full massage shot and just <laughs> try, trying to produce a full ball hit here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not, not from this particular distance, but I remember you trying to show uh, this uh, specialty shot uh, uh, during one of the Action Report podcasts. Yeah, that would be if I was if I was playing for fun. I would do that. He tried to kill it, but yeah, he, he overcut it a little bit. Got out of line from the six. He just uh, he tried to do too much on the six ball. I think sometimes you, you the, the angles play themselves out. There's only one way to do something. Another opportunity for Maxim. And a very good one, probably helping him to stay even yes that's it beauty beautiful shot all right i'm going to get back to lobbying for my rule here okay so we're going to play call shot call safe but the thing is you have to call every shot so if you call the break shot and don't make the ball you're calling on the break the incoming player is going to have the option Right? Probably. Maybe they can shoot or pass, depending on how the table lays. What do you think? Good? Yeah. Uh, could you uh, probably... Um, have you ever played uh, so-called uh, two... Is it two, 
two shot push out or two, two shot push out. You know, uh, yeah, the some uh, some kind of uh, old set of rules. Yeah, G- Greg Sullivan, uh, he was wanting to promote that on a ten foot table where I, where I think you push out to a shot and then you either accept it or you pass it back. I think that's the way they used to play it. I remember when I first started playing nine ball, we spotted all the balls too. If you made a foul, the ball would spot up and you have to su- shoot the spot shot. That was pretty. That was pretty neat. Ah, there's so many different ways to play the game. It seems the rules change every tournament. That I think that's what they're getting getting on on the on the uh, messages here. They're saying that if if we keep changing the rules every week, that the fans won't ever understand. Yeah, sure. We are talking uh, regularly about uh, playing on standardized equipment, but at the mm-hmm. same time we need a standard uh, set of rules. Yeah. Yeah, I think the most understandable game is the game of 8-ball. Most people understand that game the easiest. So, um, and you are going to be a part of a very interesting uh, event, uh, Make It Happen by Acustats. Yeah, next week we're playing Make It Happen 8-Ball. So uh, if you guys check out Acustats.com and they, uh, they'll have all the information on that. A lot of good players. And I'm also going to China to play some Chinese pool. They play 8-Ball over there on a tight table. And uh, Darren Appleton's going to be running some eight ball tournaments. So there's going to be a lot of eight ball going on. And I, I like that. I think that's a move in the right direction. I think more more eight ball tournaments is a good thing. Yes, and if uh, we uh, recall the IPT, it was uh, eight ball also. Yeah. So it's a really good game. And uh, just it's um, wherever, whenever a player first enters the pool room, I think it's eight ball he is being introduced to. Yeah. I think Maxim can see the three. Ah, he might have hooked himself a little bit here. I'm not sure if he can see it. If he can't see the three, he might be able to bank it cross corner. Uh, isn't he going to lose the cue ball then if he goes for a bank and uh, he does? Well, he could bank it cross corner and bring the cue ball two rails between the 10 and 5 up near where the 9 ball is. And if he makes the 3, then he's going to get to shoot the 5 in the same pocket where the, where the 3 is now. Any English? A little bit of right. High right. That's what he tried to do. But see now he yeah, he he kept it safe yeah yeah so he's got a nice safety uh, so this w- this one once again was uh, one of uh, the examples of uh, two way shots That's possibilities shot, actually yeah. in so in, a, in a game of uh, ten ball yeah so you couldn't do that if you were playing the call safe rule or call call shot call safe so if if he called that ball and missed it yeah then Ralph would have the option to shoot again but we're not playing that rule here so. Well, actually, uh, the rumor were that uh, there were some uh, ideas about actually implementing uh, this very rule here. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think uh, it uh, makes uh, the pace of the game a little slower? I mean, like uh, show shots go going uh, here uh, back and forth. It slows it down because on that shot, you wouldn't you wouldn't go for the bank really. You would just go for the safe instead. So it, it it makes people play a little more negative. I think Ralph here, I would hit half the ball and bring the uh, three up by the six and the cue ball behind the seven maybe. Let's see what he does. Might bank it two rails around. Okay, yeah, that was a good shot. Brought it all the way down table. That was a better shot. And seems he got a very nice. Uh, f- he feels the table. Got very nice feeling of the table speed. Yeah. Okay. So Maxim, looking at. He's looking at the one rail. He wants to go. Go around the five to the left, but I don't think he can quite get around it. He's going to need to kick two rails or one rail. 
Maybe he could uh, go around uh, from the left side, but only with a curve shot. I think he's gonna looking at going two rails and try and stick the cue ball and then play the three ball to come up table. But the three's gonna have to miss the nine, five, and ten. The ten, especially. Yeah, if the if the three hits the nine, five, or ten, he's, there's a good chance he's gonna leave easy shot on the three. Yeah, that's exactly the line he's checking right now. He could go two rails and try and thin the three as it comes out and play and call the three in the corner. Now, if he makes but the then three... But he's then he's in danger of just hanging the ball in front of the corner pocket. Yeah, but the safe's built in that way. You know, it's it's uh, if he hits it thick. You know, like say he goes two rails and hits the three thin, the cue ball's going to come towards the seven ball. And then if he happens to make the three, he's got the five. And if he doesn't make the three, then he's... Then it, the chances are the three will just um, be somewhere near the corner, you know. Yeah, so he made he made the call. Called it in the side? No, to the corner. Oh, he just the just corner. the way you uh, Yeah, that's the shot I suppose, was talking yes, about right yes, there. yes. That was a beautiful shot. Maxim is a very smart player. Or mm, we both have no dumb doubt ideas. about this. <laughs> <laughs> or we both have similar dumb ideas. Oh well, well, let's hope so. If if Maxim ever grows uh, into uh, such a smart player as you are, uh, yeah, uh, that would be awesome. I hope so. I hope not, because then he'd, he'd be out of the tournament like I am. Well, I hope he can't hear what I'm saying. No. <laughs> Well, okay, Ralph here's going to try and kick two rails again also, but he's going to try and hit this one thick and stick the cue ball right there and try and play the three ball into the side pocket. And if the three doesn't go, it should come down past the six to the, hopefully, a safety. That's what he's looking at. He's looking at just trying to kick it right before the side. <coughs> He's got to call this in the side. He t I don't see him calling this ball. Oh, he's going the other way. See, this is a much more difficult way. Is it a ball. two uh, two rail uh, kick shot again? Yeah, but he's going yeah. the he's he's going the long distance. Much harder hit. And got it again. He got a nice hit. I don't know where he called it though. Oh, he hung it up. But I'm not sure if Maxim can see that. That's pretty deep in the pocket, these diamond pockets. And the ball hangs real deep in these diamond pockets. <laughs> and here we have Paul Smith back again, and Corey is uh, basically addressing uh, his <laughs> words to him. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm needling Paul Smith over here and talking about the deep, deep pockets. Look at that ball. That ball's almost hidden by the whole rail. I don't think he can see it. It looks like he's going to try and jump this ball. Uh, actually, if we imagine for a second that uh, six and uh, nine are not there, even even still, he cannot, I think, uh, hit it rail first. Rail first? Can he hit it? I don't think so. It's pretty deep. Yeah. It's pretty deep in there. So only direct hit is available. I think it is that deep. I think he might be trying to double jump this. He's going to jump it over the nine, land once, and then over the six. Is it possible to uh, j to achieve the second jump uh, uh, yeah. as high as needed? Yeah, it can happen. Not over yet. Okay. Over now. Yeah, that was a difficult shot. Ralph was fortunate to get that safety. I don't think he was trying to do that. But here we go. How do you get on the five? Ralph just put the cue ball in his pocket to clean it off. Uh, he usually does this. Yeah. yeah. Might as well. Especially on his breaks. So I think it's important to keep the cue ball clean. All the rest of the balls clean too is very important. Makes me wonder actually uh, how clean his pockets are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the end of the tournament, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Ralph uh, Rins is uh, like washes his clothes. <laughs> yeah. Well, some people put the chalk in the pocket. And I, I don't, I've never put chalk in my pocket, but you would think that after a while your pants would get 
What I usually get a lot get, of chalk in there. I so. usually get, get get amazed about snooker players uh, using uh, putting chalk in their uh, like. Yeah, the yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, if you're a player that puts the chalk in your pocket and then you put the cue ball in your pocket, I guess you get chalk on the cue ball. Well, he's got a little slight angle here on the five. I think he can. Uh, he might even be able to stop it and just take the shot. But most players would follow around three rails. Follow this with a little bit of right spin. Take it three rails. It's a good shot. He did nicely, yeah. Okay, I think he's just going to come out and play for the seven in the corner. Get pretty straight on this seven. The nine's in a little bit of a tough spot. I don't like ball position and where the nine is. You need to get really good on those balls. Okay, so he's got a nice angle. I think he can just draw back a little bit. Or he could play the cue ball over to the right cushion, come towards the nine. Well, it seems he's got enough angle to make a little nib draw. Well, that was a good run out by Ralph, set up by a fortunate kick shot. So there's been some luck on the break, there's been a fortunate kick shot. Oh, the majority of people uh, in the stands right now are uh, players uh, eliminated from the tournament already. Yeah, they're watching, see how it goes. I think if you're a player and you want to get out and play a professional tournament, if you just sit and practice your 10-ball break, if you can get the break down, you have a chance to beat anyone in the world. I don't care how good they play, because the break is just that important in 10-ball. You could be a solid B player. If you get the break down like Shane Van Boney, you might come win this tournament. Wow, you know? that's interesting. Yeah. But uh, that's a pretty big if. <laughs> well, I'm just, I think the break's that important in 10-ball. I mean, as long as uh, you master the break like Shane does, uh, you are no, no longer a B player. Well, your game could still be a B player, but your break would be good. In my opinion, you shouldn't define the, tr the winner of a tournament on one shot. But in 10-ball, they do. The winner will be the guy that breaks the best, most likely. Tough. This is live, guys. This is not a rebroadcast. Uh, you will be able to access uh, the videotapes, archive, the video recordings of all the matches uh, we feature here but this is live and uh, live with us uh, are Corey Deal and uh, Paul Smith Paul Smith is uh, not on the mic but uh, you feel free to ask him anything he is nearby to give you a reply well this is once again another push out so we got some play in this game we'll see who can win the win the first shot at the one ball here it's another smart push from uh, Maxim. You know, he improved his odds by get letting himself see the one, but he left a tough enough safety where the chances of Ralph taking this is slim. I think Ralph would probably uh, give this one back because I don't see any real easy safety here. So if Maxim gets it back, then he um, 
he got a good result from his push because he improved his odds and and uh, is still at the table. So that was a good shot. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to have to play a tough safety. I think he's going to try and uh, bank the one across the table, maybe towards the eight, and go two rails behind the nine ball. See if he can hit it. Oh. Corey, your soft break was designed to help you win. Yeah, I was trying to break better so I could win. Because I know the break's very important in most games, so. That's the whole thing. You try and practice your break as much as you can to win these tournaments. If I knew it was just about playing the game, I would probably practice playing the game more. But, you know, you you, uh, you develop your game to win tournaments under the rules that you that are designed to play by. So I'm not the one that makes the rules. So whoever makes the rules kind of dictates what I try to practice. So if it's a if I know the break is 90% of the um, game, then that's the thing I need to go practice. So I got to get the perfect break. Yeah, actually, as long as uh, this is not uh, not against the rules, it is legal. Oh, what a shot! Ralph made a great shot there. Uh, he pocketed uh, the one and even the two. Yeah, Maxim hit a nice little safety, but uh, you know nowadays with the jump cues, these th these jump cues can get over just about anything now. So. Uh, the only safety that's any good is uh, freezing the cue ball on a ball, it seems like. But so, uh, are you in favor of jump cues? No, I'm not in favor of jump I I think it's okay to have one jump per match. Mm, that's an interesting, o match, interesting observation, like like with a time extension or... Yeah, but yeah. the jump shot takes takes too much away from the safeties. You know, a good safety yeah, player. Yeah, true, true. It 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 doesn't mean that much to be a great safety player anymore with the jump cues the way they are. But it, it's fun for TV. People want to see some jump shots, so let them have a few jump shots, but not every shot shouldn't be a jump. What shot. about the break box? Ah, uh, the break box. It's just a band aid rule. It's a band aid for the. You know, they, they keep making up new rules to try and fix the game. Well, actually, because uh, one of the viewers mentioned uh, our um, challenge match uh, between uh, Chinakov and Van Boning. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, and uh, the break, the break from the box was applied there. Um, well, I think uh, particularly to try to make things even because, like Shane, is a monster breaking uh, from anywhere. Yeah. Th well, I think Chinakov knew that. Um, Shane's break is so strong from the middle, so he made yeah, yeah. made a stipulation, a, a rule, a new rule to break from the. So you can't. You're not allowed to break from. Yeah, the we can. We, we can. Uh, we can tell if it was Ruslan himself, but still, uh, maybe the organizers wanted uh, to oh, okay, make well it even to to give Ruslan a chance. Yeah. So kind of forced Shane uh, to break actually, uh, fr yeah, from I the side. I think Darren Appleton was talking about doing that for. Um, for the uh, his eight ball event, he's talking about maybe you break from. I'm not sure if he's decided every all the rules are yet or or not, but he was talking about eight ball where you where you had to break from the side rail. You couldn't break from the middle, and that is a, again another rule that would would uh, be against Shane Van Boning. I don't think you, if you have a great break from the middle, you shouldn't be penalized. You know, the I don't think um, people should make up rules for to penalize Shane for breaking great. You know, if he breaks great, that's fine. But uh, yeah, sure, go ahead and uh, work on uh, your own break. Yeah, work on your own break as much as Shane does. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that take the, take some of the luck out. You know, if it's call shot, call every shot. You know. So Ralph here is in pretty tough situation. Measuring the line from the 
five ball past the seven just probably making sure he doesn't uh, catch the jaw of the side pocket that's a good shot see where he got the five two it's even blocked yes it's blocked blocked by the nine yeah even though he didn't get the safety behind the seven he left a long combination at least I think Maxim's just going to try and roll the cue ball down behind the nine and bank the five up past the seven. I'd like I'd try and put not the vice five versa. No, I would try and put the five back where the cue ball is, and the cue ball behind the nine. That's what I think I would do, but it's not easy to do. Or maybe the cue, maybe the five by where the chalk is right there. You just pick the chalk up, follow the cue ball down. It doesn't look like you could scratch. He's looking okay to thin the five and go back behind the seven. That's not bad either, but you could scratch on the side you're doing that. So if he's still uncertain himself about this one. He says the rule about illegal breaks is garbage. <laughs> That's the one uh, being used uh, at Euro Tours now. The so-called three-point rule, uh, where you have to make a ball uh, and uh, like mm -hmm. make a extra two to break the line. Break the line. Yeah, it's another band-aid rule. It's a it's a rule made up to fix the rules, and then the, what happens is you just end up with a whole bunch of different rules and way too many rules. You know. Well, I don't fancy so. fancy it either because. Uh, um, even if you uh, come up with a pretty nice, powerful break, but uh, again, all of a sudden uh, a ball gets uh, caught by the jaw and uh, rebounds uh, back, it would have crossed the line, but still uh, it didn't because it met the facing of the side pocket. And uh, here you are, you have to pass the table to your opponent yeah. out of uh, nowhere. I think the whole game of nine ball can be fixed by just having some some young kids out there rack the balls. Just bring a bunch of 10, 12-year-olds out to rack the balls. And use a rack. delta rack. No, just use a regular wood rack. Have them throw them up there, and rack them and flip it off. They can't even see if they're touching or not. And if they're, if they're not frozen, <laughs> what's the difference? Whoever said the balls have to be frozen? I don't get that. Now everybody just breaks the balls. And, uh get on with your lives. Just play normal nine ball. Ralph was back at the table here. Ralph's after playing well. Ralph's playing really good. After a safety attempt by Max and Dudenets, failed a little. Moving his cue ball a little bit closer to the nine ball, and once again, a um, stun shot or a stun draw. Sending the nine down the side rail to the corner pocket leaves him an easy shot on the ten, which is all he needs. Ralph playing well. Still a very close match, racing to eight. Anything can happen here. But now uh, the German has got a two-point lead. I think Maxim's played played very well. Uh, up until that last, I think that last safety shot may have been a mental error. He, he had a couple different safeties that were better, in my opinion. But uh, other than that, he's made a lot of good decisions. And he's shooting straight. So... Well, uh, seems we've got a timeout here, and uh, uh, yesterday I was browsing uh, through the recordings and uh, noticed uh, one of the comments uh, were asking about uh, which kind of tip uh, are you using right now. 
Oh, which kind of tip am I using? Yeah. I'm using an Elk Master. Uh, is it a Milk Dud or just out of the box? Yeah, just out of the box. Elk Master. Isn't it too soft? I mean, uh, how, how uh, durable is it? Uh, how long does it uh, stay like in, in shape? Well, I mean, you you have to you have to get a good one, you know. Uh, they're uh, but I've been playing Elk Master. Or I've been playing Tweet and stuff for a while. I like the uh, you know I like the Master Chalk and and they make the same company makes the Elk Master tips. Uh, have you ever tried uh, triangle tips? Uh, because uh, they are yeah, also by Tweeten. Triangles also by Tweeten. They, uh, but they are much harder. Uh, they're a little bit harder. <laughs> they are a little bit harder tip, and uh, uh, I have tried those, but I haven't tried them a lot. I put a couple on, and I thought they were a little bit too firm for me. But uh, yeah, the Elk Master, it just um, it uh, it grip it hugs the ball, you know, and it compresses. And hugs the ball. You can get more spin, I think, with it. What was the yeah. hardest uh, tip you, you ever played with, or maybe ever tried? <sighs> hardest tip I've ever tried. Uh, well, I've put some tips on uh, for breaking. You know, mm -hmm. like those phenolic yeah, tips. Yeah, but uh, but for but for for playing cue. For playing cue, oh, uh, I'd say that triangle was pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. I'm not. I'm not very adventuresome with tips. You know, once it's if it's not broke, don't fix uh, it. So yeah, okay. You what know? about uh, what about what about multi? What about multi-layer tips, like layer tips? With I have layers. tried some of the layer tips, and I don't like them because I'm afraid that uh, the glue, whatever they glue them together with, if I if I contact the glue spot, I don't know. It's going to be a different reaction, and I've seen some of the layers fall off on some of them. I'm not a big fan of those. That's just my opinion. I know a lot of players that use them and they love them, but um, yeah. So okay, I'm old school when it comes <laughs> to tips. I like Maury's. Yeah. Well. Had really good luck with them. Yeah, they they say they they are not uh, as good as they used to be, like uh, so-called third generation. Well, I've got either friend. Four or five set aside for me. I get my Q tips once a year. Yeah, th those are even uh, like uh, uh, go now uh, at a crazy price, uh, about one hundred dollars per tip. I don't care. <laughs> one hundred. Some they're trying to sell tips for one hundred a tip. Yeah. Who? Because uh, they the old Moorish, like the the people who own uh, old Moorish, uh, which uh, are considered to be excellent, like and uh, the. Wow, it's funny that uh, there are people that are ready to b pay that much for. Wow, that's for probably it shows like uh, how good uh, these tips were. Maybe I'm in the wrong business. I need to make some tips. Yeah, <laughs> probably <laughs> it's time to come up uh, with your own. You know what? I'm, I've thought about that. I'd, I'd really like to come out. Right, like to uh, come out with uh, my own special um, mixture tip. You know, the hardness that I like, the exact perfect hardness that I like, because. I think each player likes a different hardness and a different feel. And if well, you should you actually, you uh, should, uh, you should actually do this because uh, Evgeny Staliev uh, yeah. did this uh, a couple of years for a Russian billiard market, and uh, well, uh, he is a very respectable name, and uh, like uh, the players were uh, immediately yeah. looking after this one. So that, that's interesting. Maybe I'll, uh, I, I've trusted the Tweeten products for a while, so maybe I can talk to them and see if I can get the hardness just perfect for me, and then if. If people want to play with my tip, then they can contact me or something. I'll I'll ask and see if I can do that. It'll yeah, be fun. So uh, Stalov makes his own tips, huh? Well, I don't think uh, he makes uh, them right now. Well, and especially, well, he's been involved in uh, like probably testing some, uh, like saying like I like this one and I don't like this one. And uh, part of uh, giving his own name, I don't think he has been involved in any part of this. Yeah, anyway, I mean but uh, recently they had to change the manufacturer and uh, right now uh, there is no such tip by Evgeny Staliev. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was at his pool room. He said he, was, he, he, played, he had his own tip on or something. So maybe he's got a few of them. Well, another good break made the three ball.
shooting over the cushion here. Well, the two is located pretty nice for him. But he is forced to play the one uh, in the side. Wow, what a shot that was. Un unlucky not to get a shot on the two. The two's laying over the hole. He can pretty much... Cue ball could go anywhere on the table and have a shot. Well, I should have taken this one into consideration. I think he was aware of uh, hitting the nine. Yeah, I mean, he had, to, he had to let the cue ball go there to make the one. He, didn't, he couldn't really worry too much about the cue ball, but he looked at the two and it was laying over the hole, so he assumed he's just going to be able to make it from about wherever. And, uh, oh, that's unlucky. Even with the jump cue, he should, he had a good chance to make that, but he had a, he'd get just a little bit of side spin one way or the other with the jump shot, and it, it masses by the time it gets to the ball, and it's very hard to make them. The Taiwanese players, they hit the jump shots really good. And at the same time, if you uh, apply a side spin on jump shot, especially an unintentional one, uh, it, uh, the cue ball deflects a little bit. Yeah, it deflects and it curves before it gets to the, to the ball, depending how hard you hit it. Well, and a good safety from Ralph. Now, I think Maxim can go one rail with some spin. And if he can catch the bottom of the two, he'll leave the cue ball near the seven ball. But you got to watch the scratch, because you could come off the rail, hit the two, and scratch in the corner also. So he's calling the two in the side pocket. He needs a lot of spin. He might even need to curve this a little bit to get around. Yeah. Yeah, so he tried to did and the... Uh he missed the ball. I missed one earlier in one of, my, I think, in my match on this table too. The same way because the the spin is just you expect the spin to take off the rail, but since the cloth's new and the and the hot lights and it just doesn't it doesn't grab like it would on those tables out. Yeah. By the way, I just was about to ask this because we have a man nearby who would be very interested to hear your impression of like if if there is uh, such a big difference uh, between uh, this table and, uh, and the, the ones other ones out there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Th th the main thing is the it's the condensation. I think that the lights uh, keep this table a little more dry, so the balls will slide more. What do you think, Paul? Is that accurate? Over the out there, if it's it's not, it's a little cooler, and there and there be a little more moisture on the table. Well, if that was the case, I would agree with you. But the lights are pretty far away here. Well, actually, I'm talking about moisture. I've been told that uh, the whole venue is uh, built on a pretty thick uh, layer of concrete, which uh, keeps uh, moisture pretty low here. Yeah, it's pretty dry in here. And uh, even though one guy who um, just uh, he said that his perspiration is less here in the in this room. Oh yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah, it's been very dry so here. Probably, probably like moisture and humidity is not an issue here at all. Yeah, well, especially in the winter time with the heater, the, the hot air is dry. Yeah, the heaters w in the winter. It dries, dries, yeah. So we are here with Paul. We were guessing uh, whether it is just a player's belief, like uh, like placebo effect. <laughs> they believe that and tend to believe that a uh, TV table plays quicker. It's not in our, it's <laughs> not in our head. It definitely plays. Yeah, different. sure, but it depends yeah. like on the setup. I, when the lights are pretty low on the table, like uh, that of the Moscone Cup or any matchroom sports yeah, event. Yeah, it's it, matchroom Moscone Cup. It's going to be times ten. Uh, slippery. I mean, this table plays fine. It doesn't play too slippery. Whereas the ma the matchroom tables, it gets so slick. It's just you just touch the cue ball and it's taken off on you. As if you were playing on ice, right? Yeah, on ice. Yeah. 
Yes, it's less state, less state promotion to semifinals, guys. Yeah, but it's fun. It's a fun new challenge. You know, you just have to get used to it. But this table plays really good, I think. Doesn't play too sticky. Doesn't play too. Uh... That's a nice way to have it here. Yeah, it's good. Ralph got perfect on the eight. He'll be going up six to three. Barring any uh, miscue here. Once again, Ralph brings uh, the kibble across the table with his pure stroke. Never touching the second cushion. And it is 6 3. Three game lead for the German. But just for your information, <coughs> AccuStats, the lighting they use now is all LED. Okay. So it doesn't produce very much heat. And oh. That's what they used at the US Open this year, and that's what it'll be at the Derby. In the past, those things were hot. I mean, you could. Okay, I'll just transfer the information that Paul says that AccuStats are going to use the LED lighting over their tables at their events, so they don't produce as much heat. Huh, well, that's just interesting. Yeah, maybe get, 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 get prepared. <laughs> maybe that you expect the table to be warm and slipping around, and maybe it's not. It'll be cool out there. Well, the, the goal would be for it to play the same as the rest of the tournament tables. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. You, right? Sure. Or you could or you can make the lights out on the ra other tables warm. That way you warm the table up and keep the I like a dry table, to be honest. I don't want a sticky, wet, bouncy table with old you know, dirty with the dirty Just balls and stuff. Like Yeah, I'd like to have, you know, clean conditions and stuff. It's good. I think when the table plays slippery, you, there, you can do more with the cue ball, too. You can do better draw shots, and it's better f for the fans to watch. You can do more interesting stuff. Okay, Ralph made a ball again, but didn't get a shot. Now, if you're at the table, where do you push to here? Uh, well... Where do I push to? He's looking... I think he's going to need to push to a kick. Because if he pushes up table, middle too diamond, easy, too easy the safe's too easy, yeah. Um, do you ever push to a jump shot? Well, if you're good with the jump cue, but I'm not very good with jump cue, so I don't do that. Um, what he could do, he could push behind the two and jump safety. You could try that, or behind the nine and play a jump safety. I oh, tied so, the two yeah. up. That's another. That's a good play. I was thinking maybe he could play behind the ten and jump, play safe. But he left an easy safety, didn't he? Yeah, this is a real easy safety. Just gonna spin the cue ball behind up near the four ball, bank the one up table. Probably hoping that uh, even uh, with the ball in hand, uh, his opponent uh, won't be able to develop this wreck. Yeah, I mean, if Maxim gets ball in hand on the one, he can easily break the two out, so. I would say that that was a... Even though he locked the two up, I don't like that push out. I think he could have did better. He could have put himself in a little better position. Well, what if Ralph wins a safety battle on the one ball and he makes a one ball, and then he's got to deal with the two ball? That's, that's what's weak about it. Yeah. Yeah, so... Well, probably since he did this uh, intentionally, he already had a solution to this one. We'll have to wait till it's revealed to us lesser people. Well, locking up balls is always a smart play when you're rolling out because you're just... The main thing you're doing with the rollout is you want to prolong the game. Uh, you want more play, more safeties. Uh, because anytime you're pushing out, you're the underdog. 
because you're giving the opponent the option to take it or pass. He gets he gets the choice. So um, I agree with you on that 100 percent. I think if Maxim can roll this in and then kick and stop the cue ball behind the two. So roll this in, bring the cue ball across, maybe first diamond on the other rail, and then kick behind the two and stop the cue ball and play the two ball behind the five eight. Something like that. Okay, he was trying to break it up, I think. He's still got the chance to kick behind. He can also thin the two. But thinning the two, you think the cue ball goes towards the corner pocket. It's a touchy shot, and you have to get the ball to the rail. So maybe he could just uh, only gently nudge the two, securing the cue ball from going that far towards the corner. Yeah, but if you hit it that soft, there's a chance that, that you don't get anything to the rail. Well, the cue ball, or maybe even the nine. Well, that was a good shot. He just played the cue ball. That's a clever six. one and a good. very, very good, nicely executed. Yep. Yeah, Maxim's in, in the driver's seat this game to win this game. And it's all set up by uh, Ralph. Uh, I don't think he rolled out to the, to the best position he could have. I think maybe Ralph should have... Did he jump? Yes. He jumped trying to make yeah, the one. Yeah, right yes, yes, he did. Yeah. Well, it looks like Ralph, I don't know if he can kick two rails or three rails to hit the two. I think if he goes three rails, barely missing the seven, three rails around to hit the two. I don't know if he could do that. Or even two rails. He might be able to go two rails and hit the two. Do you use any kind of kicking system, or just uh, is it by pure feel? It's mostly feel, yeah. I I mean, I played a lot of three-cushion billiards when I was younger. He's calling it in the corner. But I think uh, three-cushion is based on a variety of systems. Yeah, Yeah. there's a few systems that, that I know a little bit about, but I I don't know a lot. I don't know a lot of like diamond systems on the math of you know adding up two diamonds minus whatever because for me particularly it uh, is a little bit hard to understand uh, how you could uh, uh, pick uh, which side of the ball you are going to hit uh, with a feel well yeah we do we can hit the side of the ball but I think the systems are, are tough because the table conditions change so much Yes, they are. Sometimes they are pretty table dependent. Yeah, so it's it's systems don't work ball on one table dependent. Yeah, you, you got to have clean table and clean balls, and if it changes, the friction on the nose of the cushion completely changes the system. Billiard players, they polish the balls after every single game, and they clean the cloth after every three or four games when they're playing. For that exact reason. Yeah. Maxim's got a tricky safety here. almost looks like he might be able to just bank the two three rails around and follow the cue ball down behind the six. Okay, he's going to bank the two straight back. Not sure what he's going to do with the cue ball. Okay, he's going to follow the cue ball two rails and bump the eight, maybe? Oh, he did bank it three rails. I like that shot. But he left he it on. Just, he just called the pocket in case it happened. Yeah, that. yeah. But he lost the cue ball a little bit. He wanted the cue ball on the end cushion. It's well, a good, he it was a good choice, though. He lost the cue ball because he didn't hit the three in the right, the two in the right spot, because it ran into a ball. It would have ended up on a different line if he did it the way he intended. Yeah, the two ball would have came down here if he wouldn't have hit the nine. Yeah. Well, now it looks like Ralph's, I guess Ralph's going to win this game after all that.
Let's try and spin this out to the middle of the table. Spinning around. Mm, not enough angle to work with. I think he fell a little short on this one. Yeah. This is tough. I mean, he's going to have to, if he's going to cut it in, he's going to cut it in really slow to hold for the six. Uh, it looks like he can do it. He's just got to gotta hope it uh, roll. You know, if he's rolling it slow, it's going to have to roll good. And After all, the bank is on. I don't think he's going to bank it. He's just going to play it in nice and easy. Yeah, good shot there. I'm not sure if he has enough angle to go two rails to the left or if he's going to follow two rails to the right. I would prefer going the two rails to the left because you're coming towards the angle you want. Rolling along the line of position. Yeah, he's looking like he, I think he's gonna go. He's gonna go around to the left. He's yep. drawing the cue ball. So oh, that's a good shot. See how the cue ball's coming towards the seven. Goes on the right line the whole way. Yeah. Then it doesn't matter how close you get to the ball, but she's still at the same angle. Yeah, that's one of the basics of playing position. Like, well, Ralph's a great straight pull player, and that's one of the basic tenets of straight pull. So, uh, just draw it back maybe uh, six inches, and I think he'll play the eight in the, the left corner where he's standing now. Oh, he decided to power draw that one. Wow, that was a confident shot there. Beautiful shot. I don't see Ralph doing that very often. That, uh, you know, he let his stroke out on that one. Look at that. That was a, that was a great shot. Well, that, that's about the right time to do this. Yeah. Trying to get on the hill. Mm hmm. And especially getting there. Well, actually, drawing it like that, he had more margin for error. Because if he overdrew it, he still was going to have a pretty good shot on the ball on the same side. Well, Ralph Suke is on the hill here. And in meanwhile, we have some uh, players uh, advancing to the semifinals. Uh, Alexandros Kazakis uh, was able to beat uh, Ruslan Chinakov uh, 8-4. Eight, wow. eight and Torsten Homan uh, came victorious over uh, Daniel Kandy with the same scoreline. Oh, wow. So Thorsten Homan is in the semifinal? Yeah. He's waiting uh, for uh, the winner of this clash. Oh, okay. Well, Ruslan Chinnikov, he won uh, last two years, huh? Uh, only uh, last year. Oh, last year. Yeah. Okay. Well, he he won. He won. Oh, you you you're right. He won. He won. He won last two last years. two years, oh. and actually, uh, yeah. he won the um, very first event. Uh, it wasn't called the Kremlin Cup back then, but uh, it was like um, pretty similar. So, um, read off the scores of the last few years here. It's a, this will be interesting for the fans. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, which year should I start with? Okay, start with 2006. What was the score of the final match? 2006. Ruslan Chinakov, uh, a 14-year-old guy back then, uh, he beat uh, Tony Drago in the finals uh, with a scoreline of 10 to 5. Okay. Because he was a fearless uh, young, not the back then. Just okay, then 2011. Uh, 2011, it's uh, Nikolaus Malay versus Mick Eman in 11 to 8. Uh, Mateusz Negotski against Denis Grave, 8 to 6. Mateusz won. 2012, 2013, it was Torsten Homan against Konstantin Stepanov with 9 to 7. 
And uh, twice in a row, Ruslan Chinakov uh, won uh, 2014, he won uh, against Evgeny Stalev, uh, he won on a hill hill and uh, in a match he was not supposed to win actually, because oh uh, if, wow. you, if you don't know, Evgeny uh, scratched on the 8, like oh uh, yeah. play, play, play in shape. It was a pretty um, yeah. silly mistake actually, and uh, last year uh, Ruslan beat Mika Imanen uh, on the hill again. Wow, so Rus Ruslan's done very well in this Yes, game. and uh, it was but pretty close, pretty tense, as you see. The thing I notice is that the back a long time ago, the races were longer. Yes. Why are all the races getting shorter? Every time I show up to a tournament, all the races are shorter. I, just, uh, I really don't I like that. I, I wish think, I think, I think that's a good question uh, probably to, go to, to, to ask for the next year. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. When I used to started playing, we were playing races to 15. Now all the races are so short. Wait. You know. Well, the first event uh, was was not wasn't played uh, here, uh, not in the, this venue, and uh, yeah. it was like uh, divided into two parts. But uh, that yeah. one, uh, Nicolas Malay won. Uh, it was race to eleven in the finals. Only I think so. Ooh, you ran that a little. Yeah, looks like Maxim got a little bit too far on this one. I don't think he can cut it in. It's pretty thin. He might be able to cut this in. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a very thin cut. Why are not they wrecking the two and the three at the top corners of the wreck, guys? Because we're playing WPA rules and WPA rules, uh, you play, uh, you only place the one uh, ball on the head spot and you place the ten in the middle. That's it. Oh, so they can put the other other balls are completely random order. Yeah. So that's uh, the that's the only. They're probably just used to playing other tournaments, so. Well, I think like maybe the Philippines uh, is the Filipino style of playing ten ball. Mm -hmm. mm, wow. Trying to duck behind the ten, but uh, Maxim fails here. Well, that was a really yeah. tough. That was a good try. That. It was a good try. That was a tough shot. All right, so Ralph has a decision here. Should he shoot the three in the side or the corner? He can. Sh can't really see his angle, but some of these are tough decision to see. Well, I don't. It's bigger. I don't think he's going to play this in the side. You can just check this from this angle. Yeah. If you see the tail. Yeah. Well, the side's closer, but it's probably a smaller pocket. Yeah. It's probably twice as far to get the three to the to the corner pocket, but the corner pocket's bigger. Now, is the is the corner pocket twice as big as the side pocket? Those are the things that I'd be thinking about on, on a shot like this. Well, probably as long as uh, you should sit straight, it doesn't make uh, such of a difference. Well, you always want to make the right decision. Of you course, of course. You want to choose the biggest pocket. It looks like he's going for the corner. Oh, wow. Didn't think that scratch was possible right there. Mm, I'm a little well. bit surprised uh, by with this because, uh, of course, Ralph was uh, very well aware aware of uh, like uh, the cue ball's path after contact yeah. uh, on the three. Yeah, the, the, he well, didn't. But the, but the object ball went into the left side of the pocket. It actually hit the rail slightly and slid in. Well, so that uh, changed the angle that the, the ball came, the camera angle off of the object ball. He didn't have any excuse to to have the cue ball going anywhere near the side pocket there. I think he just miscued it. He maybe he hit a little bit too far on the left side of the cue ball because the the four ball was right over the pocket, so he didn't need to get any closer oh, to the four. Another mistake. Yes, but, uh, just look at that. Yeah, Maxim. Uh, you don't need to be rearranging the furniture when you're playing. On well, the probably it just shows that he didn't expect uh, to get back to the table in this wreck. Yeah, he didn't. He's he kind of rushed through those last three shots. Sink thinking they're pretty easy, but uh, tough shot here on the 10. Made it wow, look easy. Good shot. Well, Maxim's still got a chance. You never know what could happen. Just a couple uh, lucky breaks, and uh, who knows? I'm enjoying this match. There's been a lot of play in the games, you know. They're playing a lot of safety ma safety battles, and uh, that's always good. 
Yes, Ralph did uh, actually undercut the three a little bit. Max him smiling over there. He's smiling. He got the got a little bit out of position, but made a nice shot. It's good to see him enjoying himself out there. You know. No, he just. Right now, what he's thinking is, I want to get to the table one more time. Yeah. Okay, so the referee racked him, and then uh, Ralph touched them all, trying to make sure they're all frozen. So I just briefly checked uh, Maxim's bio and uh, all of a sudden uh, he got eliminated uh, at uh, this stage of the event four times already and he's never been uh, through to the semis like uh, Oh wow. Well, maybe this is his year to get through because he's, he's just got four. Oh, just excuse again. me. That's the, that's the first time ever he is uh, into last eight. Oh, first yeah, time yeah, last eight. Yeah, so he, he got eliminated at last 16. Okay, so this is a good milestone for him. He's, he's a young up-and-coming player. He'll, be, he'll continue to improve, I think. He played well in Kuwait. I saw him playing well. He got the last he 32, well I think. He got the third turning stone. Yeah, he's, he's a good player. And he's just gotten fortunate here that uh, Ralph hit a nice break and uh, yeah once again we're going to see uh, some yeah. table time going back and forth I think from here well this time Ralph can see the ball so he's not going to roll out I don't think I think Ralph can thin the one down to the end rail oh he is going to roll out it's not very often I think he can see the one can he I heart, if I could have saw the one, I would have thinned the cue ball, thinned the one, and play the cue ball up by the five, because it's for sure safety, I think. But uh, the side pocket once again uh, is there. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I wasn't out there to shoot the shot, so it's hard to tell. He might he might have been totally hooked. But uh, I, think he, I think he can see a little piece of the one. He can see the one. I'm not sure what he's going to do with it. Tell you what he might be able to do is just thin the one um, over towards uh, towards the three ball. I think the eighth limiting how thin he can hit on the one ball. Oh, okay. Well, if you can hit it thin, I would I would play the one one rail towards the three and try and bring the cue ball down behind the five. Hit it with some left hand spin, and uh, I don't think there's a double kiss there. So, you know, if he can bring the cue ball between, kind of between the side pocket and the five ball. Yeah. Drop it down behind there. Well, if he can hit it thin, there's no double kiss. Yeah. Another thing he could do is he could hit it full and bank the three, three rails around and draw the cue ball uh, over towards the three. Yes, Jason, once again, what's your question? Is it about a cue talk and the cues being like running shoes? True. Ask what is it? Well, I just hope. Uh, Corey Dool, what he thinks. He been with. Oh, ask Corey Dool what he thinks about what. Uh, they uh, were discussing some uh, cues, like switching back and forth uh, between the different uh, cues is not good for any player. Oh, okay. Okay, what's best shaft for Corey? The question from Jason Shaw himself. Oh, the best shaft. I'm playing the uh, Muchi Pro shaft. It's a good shaft. Yeah, uh, but what's the best? <laughs> well, it's the best shaft. Uh, that's what that's what Jason's been playing. He's won, I don't know how many tournaments he's won with the Muchi Pro shaft. I'm playing good with the Muchi Pro shaft. I mean, uh, you, you, you have tried uh, so many of them. Yeah, I've, tr I've tried quite a lot. Um, the thing with the Muchi shaft is it's a solid piece of wood. And I think some of these splice shafts, they, they cut the wood into a bunch of pieces. 
and glue it back together and and over time when you start hitting balls really hard it kind of breaks down a little bit but they play well I think you need a new one all the time so uh, for me I shoot a lot of balls really hard so it's it's tough to I want something that's going to be able to hold up be durable and Jason I test the durability on my uh, Muchi sometimes you know if I miss a shot I'll test the durability of the kitchen, <laughs> you know, on the table. Yeah. What do you think of that, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty durable. I've tested it plenty of times in the last year. Uh, it's a good plan, Q. So two jump shots in a row now. Oh, Ralph let that one get away from him. Well, that's a couple miscues from Ralph. You never know what can happen here. This is a... Uh, I mean, if Maxim runs out here and breaks then and runs breaks out. and runs out, and you're looking at 7-6, a little pressure. Ralph would have to win on his break. You know. So really, the only thing... I if Maxim were to run out here, the only thing Ralph has any control over is the one break he has to win the tournament. So really he only he's he's got one chance to win if if the other player played perfect. Yeah, that's interesting, right? Yep. Even though he's down even though he's ahead 7-4. If he's playing against uh the perfect human against the ghost. Yeah, if he's playing against the ghost, he only has one more chance. Right? That's alternate break for you right there. Well, if this is me, I don't try and draw it too far. Maybe just a foot back, just to make sure you're st still pretty straight on the four. Yeah, just like that. So go in one cushion here, one rail under the five. Yeah, I think I would follow one rail, and I'd try and get a little bit of angle on the five to where when I shoot the five in the side pocket, I can slide towards the six. That's I do prefer action. going into the rail on the shot, so like on the five ball, or just uh, going without he using any rails. He played for the corner there on the five, which was su surprising. I didn't, I didn't expect him to do that. The angle in the side must have been pretty steep. Must have been a tough shot in the side. So now he's just going to follow across one rail and back out to the middle of the table. I just played it nice and soft. That's perfect. Yeah, I think Ma uh, Ralph had the match won if he could have uh, made, what was it, the three ball and not scratched? Yes. In the side? I think the uh, nine ball gave him a false sense of security. He thought he couldn't scratch because the nine was in front of the side pocket. Somebody forgot to tell the cue ball. Yeah, I forgot to tell the cue ball. So, well. pressure is starting to build up. Just a little bit. Pressure on. Well, he just needs to get fortunate on the break and get a nice easy shot. Which I didn't see too much of this match. Most of the time, they do make balls on the break. But it seems like... Uh, Two balls been kicked up to they the top don't the really know where all the rest out. of the balls are going. They don't, you know, the ones going who knows where, and uh, 
So it's not it's not the same easy duck in the corner that Shane Van Boning usually has. <laughs> Jason Shaw says they want me also, but the deal's not good enough. Well, it's what about a uh, contract uh, by Shane with uh, Joy Tables, uh, the Chinese company. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, Shane, yeah, Shane's Shane's uh, worked out a deal yes, with like Joy Tables yes, yes. to play uh, the Chinese pool. He's getting uh, the table, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a decision he made to play... Uh, play the Chinese pool. I like the Chinese pool game. Very interesting. Uh, Dry break. Yeah, I would be I would uh, I would also be interested to uh go over and play a lot more Chinese pool. Play the uh the eight ball on those tight tables is a very good game and I enjoy eight ball, you know, I like to play it in America too, so uh You can always just uh, grab a set of pool balls and uh, go to the snooker table. I know the, oh, the cushion yeah, is lower, that but <laughs> that wouldn't that wouldn't work. That'd be an impossible game. It's too. Well, our juniors, our juniors uh, sometimes practice this one. Oh, really? They have wow. a snooker table, yes, and just they they call it Chinese pool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the okay. first the first time I played at the student union at the University of Michigan, I walked in. I was the only one there except for the guy at the desk. I checked out a set of balls. I said, which table? He said, take whichever one you want. So I went over to the nearest table, flopped the balls out, screwed my stick together, and ran the rack. And the guy at the desk was laughing at me. I'm like, what's so funny? Hmm. He just ran a rack of pool balls on a snooker table. I'm like, what's that? And then he showed me, and then once I knew how hard it was, I couldn't make a ball on the table again. <laughs> <laughs> but the first rack, I ran well, the table. Oh, you thought it was just simple? Yeah. Well, Ralph's got a shot at the table here. Let's see if he can he can close this match out. Oh no, he's passed it back. I guess was that it? so they pushed out again. Well, there was an announcement in the background uh, to start the semifinal. Uh, Torsten Hohmann uh, is playing Dmitry Chupro of Belarus and uh, actually that uh, basically means we're not going to have uh, two semifinals in a row running here at the TV table. We're going to show only one. Well, this is another good rollout from Maxim. He pushed out, and uh, Ralph gave it back, so he's improved his odds, and he just needs to hit a good shot here. He's, it looks like he he might even be able to see the one. If he can see the one, I, I think he can cut it in. It'd be a really tough shot, but might be kicking behind it to try and play safe. Okay, well. Oh, he's covered by the four ball. Yeah, he's covered it. I'm not sure if he left a jump shot, though. Because the one's laying over the hole. I think uh, Ralph might be able to jump over the four. Yep, he's going back to his chair. To oh, if he can jump, can jump yeah. uh, to the rail first shot. He can also rail first it. That's a, that's a good play because the cue ball would then go three rails around and towards the two ball. So he might have a little easier position if he decided to go rail first but Ralph's broke the cue down he's got the jump jumper out meaning he doesn't uh, use a separate special jump cue but he is uh, playing with a jump break cue actually ah, don't okay. see that very often uh, with the top pros yeah. recently yeah. they prefer like every piece of equipment being uh, specialized Mm. Well, that was a good shot. Well, he made, made it. it straight. Yeah. And he can see the two. Now, if he can pocket the two ball, the cue ball should go maybe around the nine. Might be able to play for the three in the side pocket just with some high English. Maybe a little bit of left.
We've got some uh, cues talk here in the chat, and I don't think guys uh, Mark Gray uses uh, One Piece Q actually, because I've seen it pretty clear he has a joint. Maybe he uses two of them. Yeah, Mark Gray likes to use a snooker cue. I've, I've tried playing pool with a snooker Well, probably cue. it's not a snooker cue, but an uh, uh, English pool cue, actually. English pool cue? Yes. Well, be really it's, it's I it looks similar, but still is different a little bit. Now, the English pool cues, they have really small ferrules. They play, some of them play 8 millimeter ferrule, or tips, you know. Uh, English pool, would that have the metal ferrule, too? Yeah. yeah. That's they a matter of tradition, yeah. Well, wow, Ralph misses this shot. Well, that was not an easy shot. That was. Can a, you imagine? That this? was a difficult shot, but uh, still, that's an that's an opportunity, another opportunity for Ralph to close the set out, and he hasn't done it. Maxim's going to have to bring the cue ball around the six ball, I think here. If he can take the cue ball two rails around the six, maybe between the four eight. He could also try and draw the cue ball straight across. That's another option. Well, we'll see what he tries to do. Okay, it looks like he's following two rails. Yeah, perfect. Look at that. Right, be right between the 4 8. That was a beautiful shot. Took a lot of cue ball control there to do that. That's another difficult cue ball control shot. He's going to need to shoot the three and miss the seven. Bring the cue ball out two rails for the four. So if he clips the seven, the cue ball could scratch. Or this is where his pyramid experience is going to come in. He knows well, from, the from angle. From this, from this position, it is even possible uh, to get position on the fourth plate uh, to a top side pocket with extreme draw. I think he's got too much angle for draw, but I think he's just going to go two rails between the seven and the pocket. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. Now this shot here, he's going to shoot the four on the side. He's going to try and get the cue ball to come straight down the table and straight back up. What about shooting it uh, to the corner right now? That'd yeah, be a little bit steep, I think. Such an easy shot in the side. Okay, he brought the cue ball two rails around. Yeah, beautiful shot. Okay, so it looks like a steep angle on this five. He's just going to try and drop it in the side, bring the cue ball out maybe where the, the spot is, middle of the table, that's where he's looking. He wants an angle to be able to get up for the seven ball. Yeah, I think that ball skidded a little bit. He got a kick there. That was a bad contact. It's always tough when you cut those balls in like that with slow speed. Mm, uh, from your you experience, uh, on which shots, uh, which shots are prone to being skid? Like, is it slow roll or maybe like a yeah. stun or follow through? Yeah, the slow shots. It's it's the slow shots. Because I don't think you ever get a skid skid on draw shot. No, it's happened before. I've I've gotten skids on a draw shot. I'll tell you where I get a lot of skids on draw shots is playing snooker. I don't know why, but I'll, I'll well, snooker is a different story. Yeah, it's a different like yeah. uh, maybe the balls, the size of the yeah, balls, and, uh, and maybe even the cloth is different. So you can get some massive. Yeah, skids yeah, but in but snooker. but but here in pool. Yeah. Here in pool, it mainly it's on slow shots. Uh, you know, if you're using inside English, look at this. Ralph hit the seven there. Didn't mean to hit it. And uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but it looks like he's showing a few butterflies here, closing this set out. He needs to. Uh, he's still laying pretty good. I mean, I he can take the six with low left hand spin and try and draw the cue ball two rails. And if he can, if he can not hit the eight, he should be fine. I need composure right now. 
Yep, beautiful shot. Now this should be it. He's laying good. Yeah. I feel bad for Maxim. He, he played a pretty good match, and uh, he uh, just had a bad contact on that five. It skidded a little bit. We've got some early fanfares here in the background. Early trumpets. Now what do they say? The fat lady until the fat lady sings, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So so <laughs> she she sings <laughs> right now. Yeah. She's right over there. <laughs> uh, Ralph came a little short there. This should be no problem for him, though. He should he should be able to make this. Yeah, manages to pull it through. Yeah. So it's 8 to 5, uh, the scoreline in favor of the Kaiser. The Kaiser Still is on. Still pretty solid from Maxim Dudonets. Yeah, good plan. Good match to watch, fun match. We'll see all the fans later. Yeah, I think uh, we're, we'll proceed to our semifinals shortly. Ralph Suke is going to play Dorsten Holland, yeah. German, German semi final. So we are going to have a player from Germany as one of the finalists. Gentlemen, uh, Ralph Suke is here, uh, as you can see uh, in our commentary booth. Uh, so, Ralph, could you please uh, share uh, your thoughts right after this uh, last eight? Well, um, obviously it was not an easy match, as uh, everybody could see. Um, I played all right, made a, a few mistakes, but at the end, I, you know. I pulled all the way through, and that's basically what matters. You know, I had several events this year where I kind of forgot to, to close it down and uh, uh, this event seems to be a little better again. I'm not uh, at the form that I would like to be at but uh, yeah, there's still room for improvement which is always good. Ah, do you remember uh, the record where you tied uh, the 2 and the 9 uh, in, in the early and uh, we had uh, Corey here and uh, well uh, according to him it was a little bit mistake because it cost you later and you lost that particular rack. Mm. I don't, I don't know if that was a mistake because I, I didn't really have a shot. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that that's the only thing that I can actually, or th that I need to work on. You know, I, I don't run out enough uh, games on my break. I'm making balls, but I hardly get a get a shot after the break. So. Okay, your stroke uh, feels good now. Well, as I said, I'm I'm not uh, at the point where I would like to be, but uh, I've had uh, worse tournaments so far. Well, still, it's uh, very nice to keep winning games uh, even uh, with your B game. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not bad. But I, I wouldn't call it my B game, but <laughs> okay, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> just, it, it, just, just kidding. Yeah, it's it, it's not the the A or A plus game yet, so mm. I'm you know yeah, all right. I'm somewhere in between. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So good luck for the, the semifinal. Thank you. Coming shortly.